I'm a lot more sober in the morning, but a lot less funny. You're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong. Welcome to episode 184 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. With me is journalist, TV personality, dog mom, and owner of the Georgia Virtue, Jessica Salaji. Hi, Dave. How was your week? It was good. How was your week? Oh, not too bad. Did you have some cooler weather up there? Uh, up yonder? Yeah. It, it, barely. I mean, it was hard to notice. Obviously, if your AC doesn't work, you know, 88 still is hot, even though it's not as hot as 95. <laughs> right. But, you know, we're only a few days away from September. Ugh. I hate winter. So go ahead and get your pumpkin sp- spice latte, put your sweater on, and go back out in 95 degree heat because it's September. Yeah, we get like two days of fall and then it's winter and everyone is pale and lacking vitamin D and I just hate winter. I hate it. The only, I mean, the only redeeming part of winter is flannel and Christmas. Flannel and Christmas, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, when it's summer, I'm, like, ready to get out of bed. I'm excited to start the day. I wake up. The sun is up. The world is right. Like, it doesn't – I live in an old farmhouse, so it's not, you know, 60 degrees and freezing and too, like, alarmingly cold. Um, I love it. When it's winter, I, like – I'm even later than usual, always. It's terrible because I don't want to get out of the bed because it's so cold. My hair statics, the clothes are ugly and make you, they add like 10 to 15 pounds. Then you can't put your coat on. It's just, it's just an awful time. So what you're saying, you prefer suns out, guns out. Yes. <laughs> yes. So first we have good news. Woohoo! OnlyFans has reversed their decision. The company said last week it would ban sexually explicit content beginning in October because of pressure from, they would not ban uh, sexually explicit content beginning. No, 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 no. Pressure. No, oh. they would. That's what they said before. Okay. I'm sorry. They like said last they week and the last See, show. I can't. I can't even. I can't even read what you give me. <laughs> they would. They would ban sexually explicit content beginning in October because of pressure from the banking industry. Quote: We have secured assurances necessary to support our diverse creator community and has suspended the planned October 1st policy change, the company wrote. OnlyFans stands for (laughs) inclusion, and we will continue to provide a home for all creators. Creators. I love it. It's just epic. It's such such an amazing word for what, I mean, it's porn. It's it's porn. Yeah, I mean, who's got an OnlyFans for recipes? No one. I don't even think that's allowed. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> unless like, you're cooking in the buff. <laughs> it's, it's not. That's actually not a bad idea. I was about I mean, to it's say a, it's a horrible <laughs> idea to do, but I'm saying for 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 a show. If you're gonna do it, yeah, at least make it informational. <laughs> First, pull the spatula out. Oh my god. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so speaking of flannel, the band Nirvana is being sued. From by the baby from Nevermind's cover album. I know this isn't the album we talked about, but we we talked about album art last week when we were talking about explicit content between yeah, blind fans faith. and um, uh, the LBGTQ article that we shared. Yes, yeah. S- S- Spencer Eldon, the man who was f- photographed as a baby on the uh, album cover for Nirvana's Nevermind, is suing the band. Alleging sexual exploitation. Yeah. Uh, in, ca- in case anybody is is younger than forty, uh, the cover dis- depicts uh, Eldon as a four month old in a swimming pool, grasping for a dollar bill that's being dangled f- in front of him on a fishing line. Uh, now thirty, Eldon says his parents never signed a release authorizing the use of his image on the album. 
I mean, here's, <laughs> well, here's here's the, uh, the the sticky point. He also alleges the nude image constitutes child pornography. Mm-hmm. I so, like. Why didn't his parents say something sooner? I believe his parents were paid two hundred dollars in nineteen ninety one for the photo. Is and is I, money is money not a an exchange of money? Is that not like some sort of contract? I mean, is his parents like didn't his parents if 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 hold on a second if his, if they were paid for it didn't his parents like distribute child porn then by that argument? I guess so. I mean, I guess every parent who's ever taken a picture of their baby in a bathtub. And look, this well, this guy <clears throat> has taken, I think, five photos since then imitating the, the picture of him in a swimming pool mm-hmm. doing the same pose at different stages of his life. Uh, I heard somebody, and don't take this as, as gospel, that he has never mind tattooed on him somewhere. Like, he has enjoyed the notoriety. In fact, he wanted to do a photo shoot, the, the same one, naked in a pool, but the photographer talked him out of it. How does one prove that that is him? I mean, I, I think it's pretty well known. Like, I, 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 Right, because his parents were paid money for it, which makes, right. I mean, he well, should be suing his parents. They took the picture. You know, when it was sold for an album cover, I guarantee you his parents had no idea Nirvana would be would become Nirvana. I mean, they had no idea. It was just some grunge band out of Seattle. Sure. And just because they they didn't recognize it, and, and honestly, if his parents if his parents had said. No, we want fifty thousand dollars. They would have been like, "No, we can't afford that. We'll get another picture." Mm-hmm. It's 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 just stupid. I mean, I don't know if this guy just likes the notoriety. He wanted to make news, or he's broke at thirty, and I think he's suing each member of the band plus uh, Cobain's estate, for like one hundred fifty thousand each. Oh my gosh. And wants wants the I think he wants the art taken down. Like it's a little too late. Uh how that I mean, like it, it, that piece of art is sitting in millions of people's CD collection. Yeah. What a jackass! I guess he I guess he never achieved anything in life outside of the fact that he could tell people I'm, I was the baby on the cover of, the, of Nirvana, and now he's talking to chicks. They're like, who? You know, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, his first band. Okay. Still don't know who that is. I mean, like, they still don't know. Like, uh. So, the city of Statesboro wants a seat at the table in in family discussions. Mm -hmm. This is my story from the georgevirtue.com. Because last, well, two Sundays ago, the city called a special called meeting emergency meeting for the following Tuesday to discuss vaccination incentives, um, which we've talked about on the show. So, I mean, it's certainly not a new concept, but um, it was an emergency. And so they had this special called meeting to basically hear a presentation from um, city employees on how they could incentivize people in Statesboro to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Bullitt County as a whole, I think the vaccination rate is 26% when for the state of Georgia, it's like 43%. So we are lower than, than others. And um, so the city manager gets up there and says that, you know, we've prepared this possible package of $50,000 and um, of different programs and, you know, including gift cards and raffles and giveaways. But We're going to target two age groups, one being 18 and over and the other being 12 to 17. Um, So minors and the city manager, Charles Penny, who when he first came, I I liked, but I I no longer care for because he does the whole like. Like he doesn't just make recommendations or lay out things he he 
advises against things and he's not the elected official and that's not his job. So I'm, I'm not a fan. But uh, this, what he did on Tuesday was the icing on the cake. So he's presenting at the microphone to council and he says, you know, um, what we want to do with, so, so they're going to give the 12 to 17 age group, they're going to do raffles for like Xboxes, AirPods, um, computers, laptops, tablets, things like that. Technology devices that would be, you know, more, I guess, more of a draw for the younger kids. And he said, um, what we're trying to do is put pressure on the parents or the kids to put pressure on their parents um, so that they will take them to get vaccinated. And then he followed up by saying that he thought that it would create stress between families and in families. And that's okay because it's a good stress. It's a good stress. And when I, the meeting started at 11, he made his presentation and this happened at like 11, 10. And I had already written my article, of course, I was just waiting for like the meat of it. So I hurried and typed it and the meeting went on for another 50 minutes before they voted. And the entire 50 minutes, I was just like fuming red hot over what he said, because it's not even like, it's not the vaccine. If you want to get vaccinated, I support that. If you don't want to get vaccinated, it's none of my business why you don't want to get vaccinated. And I support that. Like I, I, and even the, the incentives, I mean, I'm against them because I think you're getting something that's free and you shouldn't have to be paid to get something that's free. And it's coming from ARPA money and we're all on the hook for that. But it's, it's not even that for me because they're just hemorrhaging money at this point and moving chairs around on the Titanic. What it is for me is that some government official, some public appointee who is telling these council members how they should vote, that it's the proper role of a local government to wedge itself between children and parents to get a desired outcome that the government has decided is correct. You may be all for vaccines. You may not be. It doesn't matter. Like it's the fact that the government decided what they think the decision, like what they think is, is the right decision and they're going to wedge themselves. And they think that that's proper. It's disgusting. Like it makes me mad just talking about it now. School's been doing that for years. Sure. But at least we know the schools are doing it. This is a local government and none of the other articles that like I, there were plenty of media outlets there. Nobody else even mentioned it. And I think it's the most egregious part of what happened. Of course, I put it in the excerpt on every Facebook post on all the Facebook pages. And that's what I focused on because again, like it's not about the vaccine. If you want to get vaccinated. Also, if, if you were thinking about getting your kids vaccinated, but you're not sure, but the opportunity to get them a video game console is what pushes you over the edge. I think you're a crappy parent. Well, you, you have no values. You know, if, 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 if you actually, if you think that the, the vaccine is wrong for your family, if you think that it could, it could possibly affect fertility in the future for children, uh, whatever your belief is, or if it's religious and you're willing to take, take that and say, well, for an Xbox, it'd be cool for a chance at an Xbox. For a vaccine that's already taxpayer funded, and then you're going to use taxpayer funds at the local level to give away an Xbox? Or, yeah. or, or on the 18 up for, for gift cards? Somebody, so the $50,000 proposal is where they're we're launching off, but they're going to have something even greater. But two people are going to win $5,000 for getting vaccinated. One person's probably going to win something that's like $10,000 or $10,000 in value, which is just mind blowing to me that the federal government, like, let's just say that, you know, we all agree with the federal government handing out money to state and local governments for COVID. They did it for the schools so that schools will take precautions and, you know, use it for thermometers and and um, to buy PPE for people and to put plexiglass up and all these like they that's what they used it for. Uh, well, some of the districts did. Some of them gave away school supplies. But let's just say that that is like what the entire premise is. Protections and, and, and protecting your community or making sure that your community is prepared. And you're going to tell me that you think the best way is to give three people $20,000 worth of prizes because they got a shot that they could get for free? That that's the best way to protect the community. Are you? 
Are you nuts? The price is wrong, Bob. But it's still, the, it enrages me that this old man who runs government thinks that it is his job to get, to put pressure, to have kids put pressure on their parents and to put stress on families as if stress is anything anyone needs right now. Everyone I know knows somebody who is really, really sick or in the hospital or who has recently died. Every single person I know. People are worried. They're worried about finances. They're worried about freaking war. They're worried about everything. And you want to make more stress over video game consoles. You're a prick. That's not his job. His job is to manage the county office. City. City. Sorry. City office. I, I live in the county. <clears throat> Me the too. Thank office. God. It, that's it. The The department heads report to him. And his job is to implement the policies of the city council. Period. Absolutely. His job is not to go up and decide that the county needs to, or the city needs to spend money on cash and prizes. Like it's the wheel of damn fortune. So speaking of family stress, war on parents segment of the week. Cops threaten illegal kickball players with child abuse charges. Okay, so this one's not totally like focused on parents. It's it's a bigger thing than that. But, you know, it goes in line with what we've been talking about. So I just, that's why I went with the war on parents. But just want to give a little disclaimer. It's like to- war on freedom, but whatever. The continued war on freedom. Mm -hmm. The perpetrators, Ed Snyder and Joe Coleman, are hard-boiled recidivists. Recidivists. Can't talk today. Can't Can't even read today. (laughs) For four summers, now uh, now these men have been brazenly organized weekly 90-minute kickball games that bring out neighbors of all ages, from toddlers to teens to parents. Until recently, the games were not deemed a threat to public safety, but apparently a neighbor complained, and that was enough for the Colorado Springs Police Department to spring into action. Freaking Karen. I feel sorry for any nice lady named Karen. Yeah. I guess. When the cops arrived, they told the group they needed a permit to play in the street. But... They had tried to get a permit, and uh, they were told that it takes 14 days to get a permit, and they have to get signatures from everyone on the block every single week. You know, I, I, I grew up in a neighborhood, uh, and we played football in the streets. Uh, we play, you know, we skateboard in the streets. We uh, went, a, and you heard car. And everybody ran to the side, mm-hmm. the car passed, you went back out in the street. And really, like, not that many kids were hurt, honestly. I mean, I don't, I didn't have any friends hit by a car, did you? Hit by a car? No. We had scraped knees and, and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But you need a permit to play a kickball? Is it just because it's organized? And you, it's because it's in the street, but, and you have to rent $300 worth of barricades each time you're not allowed to use your own barricades i thought everyone was supposed to be like cool and zen out in colorado because they're high what what's going on out there it's it's the nanny thing i i know better than you it had it had to be somebody who was tired of the noise it had nothing to do with safety or worrying about a kid getting hit it was everything to do with I'm super chill right now, and these people are, like, really loud outside, so I'm going to call the police. You know, every other municipality shows videos of police officers Mm -hmm. who get out of their car and play basketball in the street with kids. But not Colorado Springs. You go and play basketball in the street in Colorado Springs, and and, uh, they're going to slap cuffs on you. And... The, um, I'm trying to, I don't remember the guy's name. There was a, um, oh, the, the police commander, um, from the Colorado Springs police department was quoted saying, we've tried to go about this reasonably. We gave verbal warnings. Um, we tried to tell them you got to get a permit and they didn't get a permit. And if 
if and they I guess they recited like with an actual ticket and they said, you do it again, we're going to charge you with child abuse. And he said, we get the district attorney involved because you're putting them out there where a car could come by and plow into them. Then it goes into contributing to the delinquency of a minor, which is a felony. I don't think anyone wants to get charged with a felony. We have really tried to work with all of you. We don't want it to come to this. What the hell? Okay, first of all, the parents are out. I mean, like the parents of these kids are out there with them. It's like the community. Like we used to have block parties in our neighborhood and I understand it was in a neighborhood, but like literally there'd be like blow up um, those slides and water slides and barbecue like and nobody had to put up barricades. We would just everyone was just walking around. And if a car came through, they could kind of see that something was going on. So they would slow down. And everything was fine. And wave. And but but everybody's parents were around and watching other people's kids while other parents were cooking or making drinks or whatever the case may be. Like this is insane. Child abuse for playing kickball. The the threat. I mean that that he went nuclear. We're gonna slap you with a couple felonies that were that. Just the accusation is going to follow you around. Yeah. And that could get your children taken away from you and get defects involved in everything else and felonies. For I mean, playing kickball. Just, mm-hmm. Voluntarily with parents, with lots of uh, with lots of people of age there to watch, support, I, I might go out there the next week and tell the kids, you got to sit this one out and have only adults playing. That would be funny. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just like that kind of a hole. So, I, ch- child, it, that were, when you throw words around like that, you cheapen them. When you say a kickball game in the street is child abuse, mm-hmm. it, that cheapens the word. Just like sexual assault, when it gets bantered about, it cheapens the word. So this this police chief is a, just a jackass. This is a good time to remind you that these are our opinions and not those of anyone, mm. not on the show or any respective company for which we may, we may work, own, or otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. Also, you can find other episodes and relevant stories over at the georgiavirtue.com. This week's Afghanistan news makes last week's Afghanistan news seem like good news. Doesn't it, though? It does. Uh, The the Taliban has gone door-to-door in search of Afghan uh, interpreters and others who helped U.S. and Western forces. You know, which is the, terrifying. These guys were more than interpreters. And a lot of these guys fought side by side for 20 years. That when we first went in and our troops justifiably ro- rotate home, but the interpreter gets another group and you get a fresh green uh, group of people who don't necessarily know that that province or that area. And your interpreter doesn't just interpret your words. He interprets your meaning. He also is the first guy to say, hey, uh, Captain, you see that field over there? There are always kids playing soccer in that field. And nobody's out there. Something's wrong. Something's up. And teach, you know, the guys on their first rotation coming through what to look for. And they saved a lot of lives. And, And it was an agreement we had with them that... You take care of us, we'll take care of you. And, you know, these guys that, that honestly, you can't even calculate how many lives they saved by, by standing alongside our troops and, and teaching them the customs and teaching them what to look for uh, and helping them get along with local leaders. And, and, and then just to... It, it, Hey, look, guys, guys back here stayed in touch with their in- interpreters and they're getting phone calls mm-hmm. and texts like, help me. Like you said, you'd be here for me. Help me. 
So, which you I know, think it has to be gut wrenching for people who are here. I mean, as if like our troops don't struggle enough when they come home and and deal with things like. I mean, you've got to deal with that kind of. I, I can't imagine. And 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 these these. They, these were brothers in arms. I mean, it's for them. It's it, it is, it's leaving a man behind. This is a guy that I made promises to. This is a guy who saved my life multiple times, and I can't do anything to help him. Uh, then we have a terrorist attack, uh, leaving thirteen dead on Thursday. Thirteen troops dead. Something like sixty-five. Afghans, right? I mean, it was a lot. Yeah, it, it was two blasts. Uh, the first was at Abbey Gate, um, caused by a suicide bomb. The second was was a car bomb outside the hotel. Keep in mind the 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 uh, uh, suicide vest got through the Taliban checkpoint. The, the, the checkpoint that all these guys, the Taliban are supposed to be searching people and are, and all that stuff. These, these guys that we're negotiating with let this slip through. Shocking. Uh, it followed the World Bank announcing it was halting financial support to Afghanistan amid worries about the fate of women under the Taliban rule. dealing a massive blow to an economy that's largely dependent on foreign aid. I think I saw somebody, one of my friends posted on Facebook this morning and said, you know, he, he was angry that people were only outraged or they're outraged right now about the loss of 12 lives and, and, you know, the people that have been lost over there and the average per year that we've lost. And, and I totally get that. I mean, it's, but what we're seeing right now, we were, we were talking about it before the show about how there was not, it was going to, this was going to be difficult to withdraw no matter how it happened. And there, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, I know what the, the best way to, to do it would have been. I don't, but I think that most people are sitting here saying, well, I don't know the best way to have done it the way we did it seems like the worst. Well, first thing you do is you don't just pack up and leave it to the Afghans. You offer air support. As you, you get the Afghan uh, artillery units, you have them set up and say, we've got A-10s at Bagram waiting to support you. Uh, make a radio call and we'll come and burp and take care of them. You know, we'll, we'll we'll drop bombs on their asses, but we're getting our people out. Mm-hmm. Look, the the Afghan officers followed the president's lead. Their their president was the first one out. That's He's like, I'm true. out. Yeah. And then the officers looked around, and this this is why when we teach army leadership school and command school, we lead from the front. You don't lead from the rear. And look, a lot of these guys took off their BDUs and put on their burkas. Or not burkas, but but, but, but their uh, their turbans. Is why you see all these guys carrying American-style weapons with perfect trigger discipline and like <coughs> Wiley X sunglasses and, and stuff that was issued. I mean, how did how did uh, you know, they, they, you know, it's not as difficult to, to taxi a Black Hawk as it is to fly, but you've got a Taliban fighter who apparently, you know, has been living with goats for the last 20 years, hop into a, a Black Hawk, fire it up, and taxi it around, you know, just trying to, to tick off the Americans. But how did he know how to do that? Well, because we trained him. We never had a grasp of what Afghanistan is and what it isn't. It isn't a country. It was held together because we held it together. But the, the way you get out is you maintain air superiority. It, it, it's pretty easy because they don't have an air force. 
but you can you hammer targets on your way out. You maintain your your, your perimeter. You get uh, your civilian contractors out. You get you get your diplomats out. You get your uh, your uh, SIVs. Uh, you get them out, and then you do a tactical withdrawal, including, but you cover it with air power. Okay. All of what you're saying makes sense. My question is, can you do that if, I mean, what you're suggesting is reliant on or is contingent upon the Afghan army kind of sticking together and, and not just melting, right? Yeah, but as long as we're, we're behind them, they're, they're off, their officers are going to stay there. As long as we're saying we're going to offer air support and keep pushing them back. You think? Long enough for just for us to get out. I see. But you but you hold, you still hold the both both air bases, and you don't you don't get rid of stuff like tactical hospitals until it's time to fold up. Now I know there were flight surgeons on some of those planes, but when that bomb went off, you know if, if we if if we're still there, you're you're, you're minutes away from a surgeon. I mean, obviously, this is so we are going to go back there. You think? I don't know how it's not. I I mean, I, I just, I don't know how it's not. But what's alarming in that regard is how much money is it going to cost us to put all of that infrastructure back in place? Uh, we... I don't know that Congress will ever authorize going back going back to Afghanistan. They didn't do it the first time. Yeah, we, we may we may as you say bomb them back to the Stone Age. But they're accustomed to that. Uh, mm. We we may bomb them. Uh, we may send uh, we may send drone strikes. Uh, we may even send, we may even send some clandestine units. But to 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 go back in and try to put this country back together. After we saw uh, the will of the uh, Afghan military to fight, I don't think so. What we what we need to do is on our way out, uh, drop a Moab on both airports, the the airbase and and the the civilian airport, and take out all the equipment we left. And keep in mind when we say we left, it's not like American soldiers dropped an MRAP. It's that. We left that for the Afghan army to defend themselves. Uh, yes, but I mean, should we have changed courses when we realized what they were that they weren't going to defend? Yeah. We should ma- maintain a perimeter at least around Kabul and gotten our people out. Have you heard about how some of the, there's a group there, I don't know how many people it is, but it's teachers, some parents, and some students from California School District that were visiting there? I haven't heard that specifically, but it doesn't surprise me. I mean, Lord, (laughs) if if they had, I guess they went to see family and uh, is what it was reported, and I, you know, I'm certainly not condemning someone for that, but um, it's baffling to me that there wasn't an earlier attempt to leave. Yeah. To get them out. Yeah. I don't know if they were waiting for a commercial flight out or what they were doing. Do you know anything about commercial travel there? Like how often? I don't, uh, I don't either. It would come from cutter. Uh, it really, it, it, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of, you would have seen a whole lot of commercial travel directly from the United States. Um, but yeah, you, you would probably fly in, in, in into, into Qatar and then get onto a, a, a different airplane from there and go in, which is uh, or Qatar, however, however the, the pr- Yeah, uh, I was having like a, have, I have a hard time figuring out what you were saying, but I finally decoded that. Yeah, yeah that's the way I've heard it for decades. I believe you. I'm not challenging you. I just uh, was like, huh. But yeah, it's the, yeah. 
everybody's starting to pronounce things the, uh, the way the locals do. But, but yeah, I don't, I don't know for, for sure. I know, um, Kabul was not on my Delta, um, uh, chart of places I could fly into. Mm -hmm. Not that I, I was dying to go to, you know, once, once you've seen Paris, once you've seen Italy, <laughs> come to Kabul. Right. No, it's certainly, it's never been a tourist destination by any means. These, and these, these children and the teachers, and I'm not saying they're like five. I mean, I think it was like a middle school and high school age students, regardless, they were seeing family. It was, I don't know if it was a charter school or what. I just, um, there was like the contractors and I, I don't, okay, let me back up. I think that we have an obligation to get every American out and, and I support those efforts, but I'm just, I guess I'm just surprised that people who were there for more touristy reasons are some of the last ones to get out because like if I was in a country, whether it was for travel or family or studying abroad and it's kind of like when the pandemic, when things started flights started shutting down and countries weren't letting people in like people were like you know what I think I need to go home and so I'm just I'm just surprised I'm not condemning just well I've got a good family friend uh, they were in uh, Cairo for the Arab Spring mm -hmm. they just happened to be visiting they want to go see the pyramids and all that stuff and uh, the father calls uh, the sons like and, and these are adult sons uh, hey, there's something going on outside. You want to go grab a grab a tea and see what's going on? And next thing is, and this guy is a, is a is a veteran of, of special forces. He's like, this is really not good. And he, luckily for for him, uh, when everybody was losing their mind, he was actually on CNN. Uh, called in CNN, they interviewed him. And when he called from the Cairo airport, told him what the mad scene was of people trying to get out of the country and. He I think he chartered a flight to Jordan to get out. Like he had the means to do that. To just mm -hmm. pay a pilot, get us to Jordan. Or what's, what's the closest place you can get us? And, and got out. Because he, he recognized, this is not good. This is not... This is, right. this, is, this is no longer tourism. This is survival. But, right. you know, people do have to be cognizant of that when you, when you tra travel out of the country. And look, we went into Grenada to go get our students. You know, that's, that's what you do is you know, there was a, I think it was a veterinary school down there that we, we went in to go, to go get our college kids. I'm sure amongst other political reasons to keep it from going communist. The U.S. officials in, in Kabul gave the Taliban a list of names of American citizens, green card holders, and Afghan allies to grant entry into the militant-controlled outer perimeter of the city's airport. What the hell? So they said this is common. They said they do this often. Um, and that may have been true, but uh, right now, I, I, you know, doing that six months ago, a year ago, is a lot different than doing it, what, eight days before a deadline? No, five days? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What the... Not just that. <sighs> there, here's... To I, I, I'm not going to directly quote the president, but yeah, we, we give him a list of names. Leave this bus alone. This bus is coming in. But to give them their uh, to help them out with the kill list, that's insane. Again, it's, it's one of those things where you're like I don't. I'm certainly not in a position to say I'm the best person to handle this, and I have all the solutions. But it it just looks like we have done things the worst possible way. At every turn. At every turn. You can't negotiate with the Taliban. You just can't. They're, they're, you can negotiate with one member or one group, but there's no unified Taliban. It's, it's a group of different warlords. And then you add in, you know, ISIS, I guess ISIS-K now. Yeah, what's uh, that about? It's an off branch of ISIS. I can't remember what K stands for, uh, but it's a hyper militant group. We have no no idea how many there are, where they're located. When we pulled out, we lost all of our human intelligence, so we have no idea what's going on. Uh, the, and 
there's the Taliban doesn't know who's who because they, they may change different groups five times. You, you get Al Qaeda, you've got ISIS, ISIS K, you get Taliban, and then you have regular Afghan civilians who may on day to day be a member of the Taliban or anybody else or go back to being, you know, Ahmed that, that is, uh, it makes shoes. Because everything's fluid right now. And everybody's rushing to make make allegiances to find out, you know, what's the best way that they're going to survive. And look, I, I understand that the president feels horrible for, for those those 13 families. But he should feel worse that it was his call. That he's ultimately responsible for that. And look, I guarantee you that those those 13 Marines would have given their lives. Had they given their lives going out and getting our Americans out? One yeah. thing. But because the command structure is allowing allowing local Afghan militants to provide security to the outside, you get a bomb through. And that, that hotel is very, very close to the airport. And the people at that hotel are can see the airport, but they can't get to it. Any special uh, immigration permits and stuff. If, if the, the, if the Taliban sees English written papers, they're taking them and ripping them up and making a note of who that person is so they can go get retribution later. Cause I think they're trying to keep the beheadings and stuff under wraps yeah, until, of course. Un- until the 31st, which as the show drops is tomorrow. So they're they're making notes for later. There's there's and there's no I don't know if there's any getting out of Kabul to get to get to the hills. There there are some group of, of intelligence specialists and even like moms that are, I think they call them the digital Dunkirk. That are using satellite imagery, finding the uh, the checkpoints and guiding people through the streets to get to the airport. Mm -hmm. it's anywhere from combat vets intel analysts and like like i said like a mom will go will go through and stare at satellite photos and go okay we have a checkpoint at this point and then hand it off to somebody and they will talk folks through on the phone uh, on on how to avoid the checkpoints and doing the best they can because that's all fluid too they you know, obviously, you know, you, a checkpoint moves relatively easily. They see people moving down a parallel street. They're going to pick up and move to that parallel street. And that's stuff that we should be doing. We should have, we should have teams with intel analysts going, all right, move down this street. We should also have birds in the air. That that are giving giving support, whether it's a whether it's a uh, an A ten gunship, or if you got a Black Hawk with with somebody with a with a saw hanging out of there to to give cover to these people. That's that's the way you do a tactical retreat. You just don't drop your crap and run. You go good luck. I don't know. There's, I, you know, you're recording this obviously before the deadline, but. Well, also it's before the weekend and yeah. look, the, the body count could, could rise. That's exactly what I was going to say. I fear also, that there's more. Also, POTUS could, could change course and go, all right. I don't know how he would do that when he's been pulling troops out. And I, I don't know what assets we still have on the ground there. I have no idea if we're just talking, because they're, they're talking about just a uh, humanitarian mission. I don't know if they have uh, what birds they have, what what gunships they have available. I don't know how far a tactical strike is, is out right now. I have no idea. Uh, mostly because I haven't spoken to uh, to uh, the chairman of Joint Chiefs, and I don't think I don't think he would like me very much anyway. Mm. 
But on to another debacle. Tax hikes expect and the Dems 3.5 trillion with a T dollar infrastructure quote unquote plan. Was it two weeks ago that we talked about the infrastructure bill? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure. To yeah, a- and we talked about how the House and Pelosi said, you know, we're not passing it because they're like, oh, there's no tax increases in the um, infrastructure bill, which is all fine and well, except that um, the House has said they're going hand in hand. And so here we are, uh, how to pay for it. <laughs> You know, this this is speaker is very powerful. Doesn't matter if it's a house, uh, state house, or uh, the U- U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. Very powerful because she didn't she didn't have the votes necessary to, to to do this, and she whipped her party. Uh, it increases the corporate tax rate from twenty one to twenty eight percent. That's a <laughs> what do you even say to that I other mean, than a bunch of expletives of like uh, who, who, who I mean price increases that's what it is that's what's going to happen that's all you can we're already, do we're already seeing inflation out of control this, this will give uh, the US combined state and federal tax rate of 32% higher than our foreign competitors including China which has a 25% corporate tax rate. Doubles the capital gains tax to 43.4%. More than double China's capital gains tax. That capital gains is is huge. Mm -hmm. Huge. Okay, so you, you do well on a stock. You decide, you decide you want to sell. If you hit that threshold, 43.4% gone. Gone. Taking away step-up basis and imposing a second death tax by taxing unrealized capital gains at death. And I, I know every our listeners are very smart. Unrealized gains are stocks you haven't sold yet or investments you haven't sold yet. They're unrealized gains. Our country hates success. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You cannot tax yourself into prosperity. It's a, it's a snake eating its tail. Successful people will continue to be successful. They will find a way. All this yeah, is and do previously is, that success was sending our stuff overseas. Right, exactly what's going to happen. Uh, uh, last I checked, Ireland has uh, like a really good tax structure, and, and they and they attract a, a, a lot of business there. And then and then they're going to yell jobs. Why don't we have any jobs? Well, you can't you can't afford anything. A gallon of milk's going to be fifteen dollars. You're going to lose family farms. And we've been losing family farms for a year because of the death tax. Uh, Imposing a 15% minimum book income that will allow the use of important deductions and credits that help promote job creation and economic growth. Speaking of jobs. And, you know, this stuff always hurts small businesses the most because a small business owner cannot afford to to outsource in the same way or to, heck, half the time they don't even know how to, you well, know. Well, even on a, on a smaller scale, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty small business. Even on my scale, instead of paying someone in my office to answer phones, I can outsource it somewhere else. And have somebody in India answering phones for a fraction of the price. Mm-hmm. And not have to cover health care, not have to deal with sick days. And you, you, you send that overseas or you send it to a, a big company that does nothing but answer phones for you. Uh, 
that stuff's already happening. So where you used to have, and I, and I know I'm, I'm a sexist chauvinistic pig, but you used to have an office girl. <laughs> and it, that's just what, what you had is that I have an office girl. She answers the phones, uh, sends proposals, all that stuff. And you can outsource all that crap overseas now or to a, a big company that does it at a uh, cut rate price. Uh, as, as we get through this, it just gets keeps worse, worse and worse. Increasing the top income tax rate to 39.6. Well, thank God they didn't go to 40. I am. Top income earners are going to lose 40% of their income. And that's just federal. Think about it. If, if you're, if, if you're in New York and you have an opportunity to move to Florida and lose that state income tax, at least you're still only f- losing 40. New taxes on American energy, including tax on manufacturers based on their methane production and carbon border tax. Brilliant. Brilliant. Send all those blue collar jobs overseas. Freaking brilliant. It worked so well in the 90s. Uh, creating a 20% global minimum tax higher than the 15% global minimum tax the Biden administration is pushing other countries to enact. You're just cutting us out the hamstrings. It's anti-American. It's, it's anti-everything. Uh, existing law denies foreign tax credits. Uh, this could be uh, this could see businesses pay a top rate of 26.25%. Repealing the deduction for foreign-derived intangible income, a tax cut that encourages businesses to house their intellectual property in the United States. We have a repatriation problem in this country. There's tons of money that American uh, companies own that they keep overseas because it costs so much to repatriate. Uh, and that's one thing that, that I that I really want to see a one time exemption, something like that. This is this is this is it. Eighty billion in new IRS funding to hire eighty seven thousand new agents. This would allow the IRS to audit and harass small businesses and American families for an additional seven hundred eighty seven billion. It would hire enough new IRS agents to fill National Park twice. If that doesn't show you priorities, I don't know. What yeah. Does. They're they're trying to one kill the cash economy. I wouldn't be surprised if they they don't start a tip line. Is your neighbor making money under the table? Do you know someone doing side work? Give the IRS a call. We'll dig through their bank records and make sure they never they don't deposit it. Pelosi plans to impose new taxes on uh, government price controls on American medical innovation. Creates a 95% excise tax on manufacturers. Pharmaceutical and, mass- go, you know, go ahead. All, no, I'm just saying all this is going to do is make everything more expensive, and which of course will impact everybody, but it will impact the poor first. Oh, absolutely. The very group he, you know. Mm-mm. That they claim to help? Yeah. No, they want people on on a, a on assistance. That's exactly what they want. Uh, they want a welfare state. They want people dependent on it. Because they, they want voters, and they want to be able to go, oh, if you elect those evil Republicans, they're going to take away your goodies. And how are you going to make it without your unemployment? Well, you, you know, no one, and the average person isn't sophisticated to know, I lost my job because of you. You created the problem and then gave me a solution. D. 
Dear God, man. This is, look, you, you say it all the time. Elections have consequences. And this is what we got. And what they're doing is the same thing that happened in the, the first Obama administration, where they had the House, they had the Senate, they had this piece of crap legislation that had been sitting in a desk since 1994, that was Hillary Care, and picked it up, dusted it off, and pushed it through because they knew the midterms were coming. You know, it, it, it's something that did not happen with the previous, previous administration because they were too busy being at war with themselves and arguing over mean tweets and things like that. But when the Republicans held the House and the Senate and they had a Republican in the White House... Did they push to, to, I mean, they did get a, a tax plan through, but not as deep cuts as, you know, we wanted, or elimination for that matter. We did not get a complete repeal of Obamacare. Because they were all worried about, you know, they are worried about fighting with each other. And you got mealy mouth people like Mitt Romney sitting in the Senate. And they were, they were worried about the cult of personality that was in the White House, not his policies. And look, you, you may not like him, but I could go for some of his policies right now. I could go for some tax cuts. Well, Jessica, do you have any closing thoughts? I do. Uh, it's not... It's not really political. Um, it's well, I, I guess it is because it's COVID. But I just um, want to encourage people to be kinder to one another. And uh, people are so sick right now, and it doesn't it doesn't matter what you think about vaccination if you're for it or against it. Like these people have families that are suffering, and and they're their friends are suffering. And I just, you know, one of our listeners, Doug Deal, he's been on a ventilator for 19 days at the time of this recording and, and he's fighting hard, but I know how hard this is for his family. And I guess I would just ask people, you know, before you, I know it's hard and when it, when you're not, when, when you don't know the people, but like ask yourself if something is productive before you say it, if it's helpful or if it's productive and sure we should all take that approach on everything, but just specific, like just try, just give it a whirl on this one thing, like on people being sick, just ask yourself if you're doing something that is either going to help the person who is sick or help their family and friends, because a lot of people are, are sick and hurting and suffering and scared for their loved ones and nothing else matters. Like, the arguments on Facebook don't matter. So that's what I would say. They never did. They never did. Well, mine's a uplifting thing. A uh, 12-year-old throws four consecutive no-hitters in the Little League World Series. At, at any level of baseball, Little League up to Major League, a no-hitter is a hell of an accomplishment. Four straight amazing and the kid is very humble he doesn't like the spotlight doesn't like doing interviews he, he just wants to go out and play the game i'm not saying he's going to make it at the next level which is you know high school or or, or something like that or even uh i guarantee you colleges are looking at him right now i guarantee <laughs> you major league scouts are already looking at him i say 12 years old is too young no no there are kids who can play they already know and uh Regardless of whether he takes the next step in baseball or not, uh, he'll have that that accomplishment for the rest of his life. So I, th- I just think that's that's really cool uh, that you know his team get is on es is on ESPN. Uh, the other thing that I don't think he'll pitch again uh, in, in this World Series because they uh, p- they pitch count these kids to keep them from blowing out their arms, which is which is a good thing, you, not to allow a little league coach to ruin a kid's arm for life because he wants he wants to win a game. 
So, for my partner, Jessica Salaji, for Eric Cumbie, our editor, I'm Dave Roberts. Let's try to have a great week.